What's up? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to the BitLab Academy daily stream. My name is Kelly Kellum. Welcome to the show. It's so good to have each and every one of you here on a daily basis, especially all of you, each and every one of you that shows up early, you early birds. I love having those conversations with you, chatting back and forth. I can focus exactly on the chats. We usually uh, allow the early birds to have a little bit of a call out and selection on uh, direction of what some of the altcoin TA is going to be later on in the show. We always break down a little bit of the context of the news of the day, what that means for markets, the context of the broader markets, how that's impacting Bitcoin, Ethereum, the altcoin market, what we should do with our trades. And then, of course, the show is all about bridging that gap from beginner to pro. So we have that top level expert alpha breaking also down the, uh, the basically throwing the rope back for beginners so we can bring them along and make sure people are using the tools in the right way and understand what the hell is going on in this market because change is on a daily basis. So with that being said, everybody hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding the bell. Let's get this show going. Again, I just want to say how much I appreciate each and every single last one of you. Now, what are we talking about today? Well, we got, is Tesla going to be buying soon? There's a certain threshold, there's a certain metric that's been hit that uh, Elon Musk had uh, basically identified as the, the, the barometer for when uh, they would consider turning the Bitcoin payment options back on in Tesla. Does that mean they may be also buying themselves? Because they did uh, buy quite a bit of Bitcoin. I think it was uh, $1.5 billion worth or something like that. They sold 75% of that. Uh, this is you know over a year ago now. They're still holding 25% of that holding. And now we got some metrics that are, it's already been this way for a while, but I think uh, Elon Musk is a smart individual. Let's be honest. There's a reason why he's accumulated so much wealth. He's probably picking the right moment where we're at in the market uh, to reallocate some funds back into Bitcoin, layer back in if he were to buy. Doesn't mean he will. Um, that could be another push for the markets. And we have some data on that as well, as well as breaking, breaking extra news, read out all about it. Uh, I can speak extra, extra news, read all about it or watch all about it. Federal Reserve announces this just came off the wire a little bit ago that it's new system for instant payments. The Fed now service is now live so that we're going to have to dive into the story because I literally pulled it up while we were doing the pre-show chat. So we're going to dig into this together. We have some other things lining up. Link pumped overnight. Everybody in the chat right now, throw in Link Marine if you are if you're holding on to Link because uh, you know it's had a. I guess everything in the markets had the massive rise and the absolute precipitous fall that felt like it was never going to end, and it's trading in that range for almost two years. Also, on top of that, and uh, here it is. It's, uh, it's starting to get some movement. So, what does that mean? Could uh, could we be seeing some more from that XRP? Still uh, making some headway. It's kind of chopping around in a little bit of a zone. Dollar is going to be a little bit of the barometer for what's going to be happening with XRP in the near future. Some people want to believe it's going to go 40 to to $100 by the end of the year. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case, but I do think there are some fireworks in store for XRP. And in kind, I think we're going to be seeing some pretty strong movement from XLM as well. But let's dig into all of that and more here on BitLab Academy. Again, my name is Kelly Kellum. If this is your first time, I can guarantee you it's not going to be your last time. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So first steps first, come over here to the Twitterverse and uh, make sure you're following me here at K-E-L-L-Y, K-E-L-L-A-M. Uh, and uh, look for that blue check. Look for that hit logo. And uh, just make sure you're following me. We uh, share a lot of stuff on here. Just want to make sure people aren't following any of the scam profiles out there because each one of us that does content has, it's a never-ending slew of, people that fake your account, they copy every post that looks just like your account, except there'll be one extra letter or a dot or a one. Make sure you're following the right, the right. there's only one Kelly Kellum, that's the point. Now also make sure you head over to the BitLab Academy, which is at Academy BitLab. Look at that, I already got 15 retweets. Everybody hit that retweet, hit that like button, get involved. You also get uh, entered to win. This is how we draw the winners by you uh, participating, helping uh, spread the word about the good old Bit BitLab, letting people know in your circle where they can come for trusted information that's non-biased, is breaking down both pro content and throwing back lessons and like understandable content for those beginners. So, because we want to make sure everybody, 
in the crypto market. Everybody, every, every, every new adopter, the faster people learn the basics and understand what's going on, the stronger the space is because they don't participate in terrible strategies or bad strategies or emotional trading because that's what everybody else in the market, and you're going to be counting on this too. We want everybody that we can to get better, but the only way you're really able to buy and sell and take advantage of you know really strong push-ups or really strong dips is also acknowledging that there are other emotional traders out there that are making the wrong decisions. So let's do our part to get people educated, but also do our part to make sure that we don't fall into that boat of being emotional traders, but we can utilize the fact that that is the case in markets and make money in the process. So a little bit of a double-edged sword there, but we got to do it with diligence and we got to do it with the right, uh, the right morality, if that makes sense. If you haven't yet, come over, check out bitlabacademy.com. Hit, come over here, hit this enroll now. It will take you to a page where you got three options. On these three options, you got uh, the option for free content right here. All you have to do is basically register, it's free. You can do the, the all access, I want all access right here. You can use give me 30 for 30% off your first month, or you can get 30% off everything that we have. The indicators, by the way, we have a massive complete overhaul of the entire BitLab trading stack that's gonna be out in, uh, in about three weeks now, right in the middle of August. Uh, all kind of new stuff, actually additional indicators that are all included in that. Um, and it's all synthesized into a much better look. But you get the indicators, the all access to the courses and the premium discord. You get premium discord with this and this one. But this one also includes all the indicators and it's about a 30% discount that you get every month when you get that bundle. Uh, so this is where you sign up. Now let's go ahead and dive into what we wanna talk about today. So looking at the news, you know, coming right here, we're gonna go through this together, everybody. We're gonna break this down together because I was, un I was of the understanding that the Federal Reserve, uh, the Fed Now service was going to be rolled out uh, towards the end of the month, but I guess technically we are on the second half of the month going into the third week of the month, uh, ending the third week of the month, I should say. So I guess we are still within that window, but this, uh, this announcement came out today, 10 a.m., right, uh, right when we had the pre-stream. So let's go ahead and read through it. Federal Reserve on Thursday announced that its new system for instant payments, Fed Now, is now live. And by the way, if you did not watch the BitBoy Crypto uh, video that he did last night about Ripple and the government and, you know, this whole thing potentially being orchestrated, whether or not that's true or not, the interesting thing about this is that through all this, through this last three years and all this just absolute destructive weight from the SEC, uh, basically throwing poop at the wall, trying to uh, <laughs> over-regulate through enforcement rather than providing any clarity on what any of the, the, the any of the rule book is for the digital asset ecosystem. Now we see that this all of a sudden gets dismissed, uh, not dismissed, summary judgment, XRP, not a, not a security. And within about, uh, a, within a week, week and a half, all of a sudden now the Fed now payments are live. Now remember the Fed now payments are also very tied in with XRP, with uh, Coin, Coinstra, I can't remember, uh, Fed now XRP. Actually, let's do Ripple. Uh, all right, let's see. Seven days before the Fed launch, the same day BlackRock says crypto will transcend international currencies due to global demand. Fox headline, Fed looking into possible digital, digital dollar. Uh, Ripple XRP logo behind it. There's just, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. And at the end of the day, we don't need to dive in too much to whatever the conspiracy theory is, or the who, the what, the where, the why, the fact of the matter is, uh, looking looking right here, I was, sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have my screen up there. Uh, this is what I was just reading. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that Ripple has been rumored, and also we're seeing evi evidence of it now, that the Ripple Net, the uh, ODL, the on-demand liquidity pools, uh, that banks are gonna, you know, uh, looking very heavily at utilizing and now Fed now technology, instant payment, right? Because we don't realize it. A lot of people do not realize this with the payment mechanisms, the payment systems that the, the world uses currently. You may Venmo somebody or PayPal them, or you know, sometimes you'll get it in the not immediately, but sometimes in a matter of 15, 20 minutes, or even overnight, 24 hours. But the truth of the matter is they've found a way to get the money transferred across into your account. But the reality of the situation is 
those payments haven't fully confirmed and settled with like you know final final settlement uh sometimes for up to you know 90 to 180 days okay the, what happens behind these mechanisms the charade of basically this the shell game that happens with all the money even when you pay on a credit card you see it uh, taken out of your account you know within 24 to 48 hours usually but on the back end of a way these payment process pr payment processing systems work some of these don't settle for six months but they have you know all their mechanisms and algorithms and liquidity pools in play uh, based on you know uh, based on the trust of different individuals as well as institutions as well as the rails and, and the type of good that it is or service uh, they have ways to make it seem like it's settled a lot faster but the truth is this is a nightmare especially with how fast our economy and technology technology within our economy uh, has grown our financial system is absolutely antiquated so we need uh, something like Fed now needs to happen if the government wants to. I don't even want to say compete, but kind of compete with the blockchain sector. And so they kind of took a little bit, of, a couple of pages out of the out of the blockchain book from all the these other assets in the digital asset ecosystem. In this case, especially XRP, uh, to basically harness some of that incredible and exponential. Uh, uh, growth and improvement of those networks. Uh, this is their way to get a little bit of their foot in the door and utilize that technology. So it, there's good and bad that comes with it, but we don't need to debate that. We wanna know for all of us that are investors, all of us that are traders, all of us that are trying to harness the best of the best in terms of the assets that can give us the most growth going into this next bull market and beyond, we want to know how this impacts what's going on with price. So let's come back over to this article, uh, see if there's any other little nuggets we could pull out. Uh, to start, early uh, 35 early adopting banks and credit unions, as well as the U.S. Department of Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service, are ready. Ready. This you have to understand this. You cannot be ready to implement something like this on this grand scale, even if it's only 35 banks. This is going to be hundreds of billions, if not uh, a small amount of trillions of dollars that they already have available in liquidity uh, to utilize to, uh, to put this into place. They don't put a system in place for something like that, uh, for something that is that they have not been working on behind closed doors for some period of time. Now, there's been rumors about this. There's been some indication about it. But the fact of the matter is, if XRP just got ruled not a security, now FedNow is live seven days later, and now they're already ready, they're already ready to implement this, they've been working behind closed doors for a good period of time. I guarantee you somebody back there knew that this was, uh, this was going to pl play out the way that it did. This is also why, uh, you, you all may not remember, about, uh, I think it was about two months ago, there was a, I think BitBoy brought it up, uh, there was a pretty strong indication that there was uh, institutional, institutional interest in XRP because there was basically like these synthetics tokens, not synthetics, a protocol, but synthetic XRP tokens uh, that were utilized for people that were, um, basically that had coins to sell from like early vesting and other stuff like that. There was a, a sharp, I mean, like, uh, like in the 20, 30, 50, 80% growth in the amount of interest in people buying that. And so this was like off of XRP, but it was showing sort of a fundamental interest in the XRP, uh, in the X XRP, um, what the settlement, uh, what the settlement or summary judgment was going to be. And now we see banks already ready to launch all this stuff. You can't tell me that the, the, that they that they weren't preparing for this for some time. And so this is just an interesting. Uh, it's interesting how the, all this is laying out. In addition, 16 service pro providers are ready to support payment processing for banks and credit unions. When fully available, instant payments will provide substantial benefits for consumers and businesses, such as when rapid access to funds is useful. I mean, I can I can get behind this. I can tell you right now. I've had a number of different e-commerce, uh, online e-commerce stores. Uh, I've had a, a multiple, uh, multiple different types of businesses, subcontracting businesses for uh, events and audio. Also, I, you know, I DJed professionally for years, uh, you know, traveled internationally and nationally. Um, and there's a lot of times where, you know, if you're selling stuff online, 
Uh, it could be sometimes 50, it could be four days, could be 15 days, could be 90 days before that payment was fully, fully settled and actually, you know, in your account. So sometimes if you're scaling a business, I have my, one of my cousins who you'll, you'll see him here in office. Uh, he's living in Bali right now. He'll be back in the States in October. And he's going to be living with me here in Atlanta for a short period of time. We're going to be building out of uh, increasing a bunch of, uh, of the online systems for BitLab, but he does online business and he's scaling a business, an, uh, an AI business development business uh, that he's working on right now. And he's hamstrung because he's actually making great sales. But in order to make the sales, he's got to do, you know, 400, 800, 1500 dollars in ads a day. And then he'll get the sales from those ads. But although that ad hit well, the sales from those ads don't settle in his account until 14 days later. So if you have something that's more instant, uh, and not just for him, I'm talking about for businesses all around the world, it it brings our business uh, our business rails for finance up to the level at which they are uh, uh, up to the level at which technology clearly uh, presents it, that is available. So it's just interesting here. As a interbank payment system, the Fed now service operates alongside with other uh, blah blah. Okay, so this is a uh, yeah, Fedwire and Fed ACH. Both these are going to be immediately displaced because. That's just, it's so slow. Uh, look at this. The Federal Reserve is committed to working with more than 9,000 banks and credit unions across the country to support the widespread availability of the service for the customers over time. So this will be interesting to see how this impacts what's going on in the market. Now, uh, let's, uh, we're going to go through something on Ripple here, XRP, and then we'll dive into this kind of is on the same, this is on the same uh, frame of what we were just talking about. Got 221 people in the room. Excuse me. Everybody, hit that like button. Join us here. Subscribe. We've got a wonderful channel here. We've got a wonderful community. Love to have you in it. Ripple hints at next move in wake of historical ruling. Yes, of course. We know that. Uh, Ripple starts talks with U.S. banks. This is very in line with what we were just talking about uh, with Fed now. I had this pulled up before I saw that other story. So this is just supported supporting that fully uh beginning discussions with american financial firms about using on-demand liquidity projects which uses xrp for money transfers in third quarter so this is gonna be interesting going you know, we've got a lot of stuff it's not just xrp this is yet to recognize the ruling on xrp affects the disposition of people around the world especially in the u.s especially banks in the u.s especially people that have been on the fence about, you know, the lack of clarity. And then in addition to all this, we also have BlackRock CEO give the stamp of approval. We also have some data here. I'm going to pull up in a second about a couple, a couple different dates that we need to pay attention to timelines, because it's very likely it's more likely than not. Everybody wants a price to go straight up. That's not how this happens. It's today's episode, today's stream, when moon, well, the truth is, to get to the moon, it's not like a rocket is launching from Earth and going straight up to the moon. To get to the moon, when we're talking about digital assets, there is a clear stair step. It's like a stair step process with a broken ankle. So you can climb up the stairs, but you go up, you got to take some breaks, you got to rest, rest your ankle, you trip a little bit, you stumble back a couple steps, but you are determined and you just keep climbing up and then you stumble back a little bit. That's exactly what the price action is going to do, especially when we're thinking about how incredibly important it is that we have this ETF applications with BlackRock, Valkyrie, uh, ARK Invest, Invesco, okay? And the, there's a longer list than that. We see how many institutions are sitting on the sideline. We see uh, the people, every one of you that has been in the market for more than three months, especially if you've been in for, uh, you know, uh, a year, uh, year, year plus. I think it's actually people that have been in three months are probably really uh, wondering how come this isn't going up like somebody told them. The truth is it does, but we get so time dilated by what's going on in the market that we think, because we stare at the damn charts all day long, we say, man, it's been sitting here forever. Well, zoom out on the chart and realize we've only been sitting at the current level for about two weeks. Two or three, is it two or three weeks? Uh, but we've been sitting at this level. Coming over to my chart, let's go ahead and see how long this has been. Uh, go here, this is a three-day chart. So it's been 27 days, so almost a month. Going on a month, we've been sitting at this level that has just been, we feel like it's, oh, it's never going to happen. Well, 
calm your nerves because if we look at this, if we look at this on a uh, let's go on a let's go on a weekly basis, and let's double click on this. We can see. I mean, look at how long this was trading in this range here. I mean, this was 140 days with the little fake pump, little uh, bull trap. Come back down, found it, found our found our base, and then we had the FTX collapse. Now coming where we're at right now. Look at this. If we kind of turn off all the lines, this is nothing. Taking a breather. Now, I did title this episode on the thumbnail, Win Moon. Mark, crypto markets are ready. Note that when I say Win Moon, crypto markets are ready, that does not mean that we are about to get a pump straight up, up only. Crypto markets are ready broadly. We have the signals in place, the on-chain data metrics. The strength of holders, long-term versus short-term. Where we're at, a little bit of liquidity coming into the global market. Seeing the global liquidity going up. If we come over here to this chart, I've talked about this regularly. We want to make sure that this doesn't revert back down. We see this right here. It's kind of, you know, right in here. This is a, what is it? Global liquidity. What do we care about this? I want to know when Bitcoin's going to go up. I want to know when Ethereum's going to go up. I want to know when Pepe is going to go up, whatever assets you're trading, whether it's high risk or low risk. If you care about your assets going up, this is what you need to care about. Global liquidity. This is the fuel for the car to take the drive up the mountain. You cannot push a heavily weighted vehicle up a mountain with no mechanical force. And in the markets, the mechanical force is actually liquid force. It is global liquidity. When money comes into the, the, the global ecosystem for, you know, the finance, uh, monetary policies, stocks and bonds, interest rates, all these things have been really, they've been trying to manage, you know, the, the still ongoing issues that we've had from the global economic shutdown in March of 2020. Some of it's subsiding. We still have the FOMC meeting next week, uh, uh, July 25th and 26th. There's a little bit of a hesitation, I think, still. Because there's going to be a speculative trade that can be made to prey on your emotions. Even if we get another hike, which is ultimately the most likely. If we come over here, a CME FedWatch tool, I think it's still an astronomically high number. Look at this, 99.8%. This, uh, this would be the biggest upset in history. If we got a pause this time, <laughs> talk about that would be, uh, it's something I, I, I wouldn't even necessarily speculate on because it's very unlikely. 99.8% of the people that trade futures, which are t tend to be pretty smart people, tend to have a little more experience than the guy that, the, the Uber driver, that, and I'm not saying Uber drivers aren't smart, but the Uber driver that has no knowledge of the markets, and you tell him about Bitcoin, he's not jumping in and buying futures. No, this tends to be smarter institutional money, people that have been in markets, even if it's retail, smarter people that understand how to, to, to participate in markets and also how to hedge themselves. That's what futures are all about. A lot of people think futures and leverage, they think it's all about, hey, man, I'm going to do 30X, I'm going to be rich next week. No, you know what? I've told you all, and if you guys haven't, if you haven't been here long, I'm very honest. I'll tell you about my, my, my wins and my, my failures. One of the best lessons I ever learned in these markets was several years ago. Now, it's, uh, I mean, almost four years ago, four or five years ago. Yeah. I was spot trading. I spot traded an account from about $1,500 up to about $70,000. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to throw this on leverage. I'm going to be rich in, uh, in six days, man. With my hit rate, you know what? Three, three trades later, I had about $6,000 left. Because I was an idiot. I was using leverage to get rich rather than to use leverage or futures as smart money does to hedge your other positions. You can also make money on those as well, of course. But the point is you can use leverage to displace you having to put the same amount of capital in that you want to trade. Say you have $10,000 and it's the first time you've ever had $10,000 in your life and you're trading in the markets. You don't go and put... You don't need to go and risk all $10,000. You could put $1,000 in, trade 10X. You still have $9,000 capital, even if, you're, even if that $1,000 got liquidated. So it's, it's a natural sort of uh, risk management mechanism that most people misuse. And I'm starting to seed some of this in because we are going to be uh, uh, bringing on some, uh, some content here very shortly talking about 
leverage trading, how to do it the 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 correct way to utilize it as as another tool in your uh, in your approach to making money in, the, in these markets. Because I think it's very important that we talk about it. Because if I don't talk about it, and then you go watch Crypto Face, then you watch uh, name anybody. And I'm not calling any of those people out because they do they do it right. But most people see what Crypto Face is doing. They try to up their X so they can they don't feel like their account's so small, and then they end up having less money than they've ever had because they're not managing their trades the same way somebody like Crypto Face does or Frankie Candles or and I trade I trade on leverage I trade spot I, and I think it's important for you all to understand how to do that. So we are going to be bringing some content, some some lessons. Uh, we're actually uh, going to be in partnership with BitGet uh, here soon. And uh, we're going to be offering some free content to, to help people know how to do it uh, in a safe way, in a correct way, so that you can dominate these markets. And again, not let these markets dominate you. So let's go ahead and jump back into this. Uh, so talking about that, likely FOMC, most likely rate hike. Uh, current rates, 500 to 525. That's right here. 0.2% of people think we're going to stay here, which would mean a pause. 99.8% uh, think it's going to be a 25 basis point hike. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the discourse is, the press conference, the tone, what they say. Okay. Now, what was the next thing I want to talk about? All right. So this is interesting. Some bullishness here. This getting back on that sort of, this getting back on that horse, talking about wind moon. We got the, uh, where's it at? Right here. We got the, the Bitcoin orb hovering over my head. Nidig, which by the way, I actually interviewed with them and got all the way through where I was supposed to supposed to work with them. And then the a hiring freeze happened because of COVID. Uh, this was still when that was uh, coming out of there. But this is New York Digital Investment Group. It's the largest uh, institutional uh, uh, custody, custodian and trade. They're massive. Uh, but they say predicts 30 billion inflow in Bitcoin with spot Bitcoin ETF approval. Now, this is something I want to really talk about today because this is going to really affect what happens in the markets. And remember, there's going to be fundamental drives and the potential growth in Bitcoin and uh, adoption as well as price go up. But there's also going to be massive opportunities for speculative plays and for manipulation. Let's take the word manipulation out. Other people in the market with larger money that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing, which is what? Make money. They're going to use every tool at their disposal. Okay? So know that you are trading and investing for yourself, but you're also somewhat in competition with the best in the world. So we need to make sure that we don't get triggered into emotional trading because we see a headline like this, 30 billion inflow from Bitcoin. Okay, I'm gonna mortgage my house, throw it all on there on leverage. No, you're not, you're not being smart. So why are they saying this? Well, NIDIG compares the size of Bitcoin's market with the gold market and explains how 30 billion could flow after Bitcoin spot approval. Okay, well, I thought, I thought they had a chart on here. It must've been the other article. Uh, essentially, while the Bitcoin uh, ETF exists in other parts of the world, the spot Bitcoin ETF, uh, the investment product has yet to hit the U.S. markets. As per NIDIG estimates, a total of $28.8 billion of combined assets under management already exists in Bitcoin investment products across the world. Of these, $27.6 billion have been invested in spot products. So these are other parts of the world. Uh, we've got it. I'm sure there's comparatively on the percentage of how much, how much assets are under management, it's going to be a relatively small amount. It's going to be in the probably less than 1% to maximum 3%. I'm, I would guess it's probably in the somewhere regionally around 1% of those assets under management uh, broadly, whether it's pension funds, whether it's uh, unions, whether it's, uh, you know, state government uh, treasuries. Uh, th there's a lot of different opportunity. Uh, there's a lot of capital out there that, uh, where there are individuals and asset managers that are like, okay, yeah, especially with all this, all this discourse lately with Larry Fink and the XRP and time and history that Bitcoin has established. But how much exposure are they going to get? We're not going to know until this starts rolling out. Uh, the question is going to be, when is that going to roll out? And how do we front run it? How do we not get trampled on? How do we not get uh, eaten alive? Let me go ahead and pull up my Discord because it is dinging like a like crazy in my ear. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, so it's just them talking in the chat. Okay. <laughs> Come on, mods. Um, so. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, they're, the, the mods are ch ch chatting in the mods Discord and it's digging in my ear. I thought I was having an issue. That's how I know if there's some issue on the screen. My ear starts dinging a lot. So, um, so we need to pay attention to, yes, the spot ETF applications are out. I know everybody's been talking about this all, you know, so much. But there's something that I think a lot of people are not really covering about this. And this is there's going to be a couple boom and bust cycles that happen between now, uh, when it does happen, and also the follow through after it happens. Because remember, in uh, what was it, it was sometime like March-ish of uh, two or three years ago when the ProShares ETF, the futures ETF for Bitcoin got launched. It was right near the market top and the price fell after that. Now, why is that? Well, think about this. When you have major, major developments on fundamentals or the opportunity for uh, new inroads and onroads to Bitcoin, especially something like a futures ETF, or in this case, a spot ETF, where there are trillions and trillions of dollars on the sidelines, that may, and this, remember this is speculative, may get some exposure. When you get something like a spot ETF, uh, appro uh, not approvals, um, applications in and acknowledged from the SEC going into the federal registrar, like has happened with, Bit, uh, with uh, BlackRock, uh, ARK Invest, uh, Invesco, Vanguard, uh, I think, I'm not sure if GBTC had refiled or not, but they're in a lawsuit against the SEC about not granting them the SEC, because there's, in their words, you know, there's no reason you wouldn't have if, if all, all, all kind of stuff. So now that we have the biggest asset manager in history with applications in, they're received, and there is a timeline, there is a date that they have to give uh, their decision by, but that date is not a hard set date. That date can be extended. That date, that date could, we could get the approval, we could just get an extension, but each time one of the, if that date is now 45 days from the date of the acknowledgement uh, of the application and they get listed in the federal regist uh, registry, then there's a certain deadlines that come into play that there's going to be some speculative price movement around that going into it and then selling off from it if it gets extended. And then the next deadline is going to be the same thing. So there, we have to pay attention to what's going on if we are trading. If you're trying to identify the best spot to enter the markets, then pull up the charts, identify what your time horizon is, or come up with an effective DCA strategy, and don't worry about all the noise. If you are a longer-term investor, if you're trying to buy somewhere around this region and sell somewhere around the top, then pick your spot, layer in over the course of a few weeks, if you haven't yet, and then when you have your targets in, in mind about where you're going to exit, then you exit then. And then you don't have to pay attention to all this, this, this small little noise in the market and your emotions going up and going down. Take advantage of the tools that are uh, at your disposal, but also don't blind yourself and, and just squash yourself with the stress of, of uh, being lost in the volatility of charts on the daily basis if you're a longer term time horizon investor. Some of the people that I know with the most money, and what I mean by that is uh, people people in my circle uh, and, and also somewhat on the periphery, you know, worth anywhere from $300 million to, to $6 billion. They have an idea about what's going on in the market. They, they move in, they start scaling into their positions. And not only do they scale into their positions, once they're scaled in, other than having, you know, uh, every few days, you know, just taking a, a peek, you know, not even at like a trading view chart, just taking a peek at like, you know, coin stats or coin market cap. You're like, okay, that's where it's at. Just getting a general pulse. But then they spend their time and energy focusing on all the other cash flow uh, avenues that they have. Now, not all of us have 300 million or 3 billion. In fact, 99.9% .9 of us don't. So I understand the hunger. All of us are hungry. If you're hungry, throw hungry in chat. I'm hungry for breakfast, but I'm also hungry and I can't let myself and you can't let yourself get blinded by this hunger to catch up to them. No, you know what they did? They weren't trying to catch up to anybody. They said, this is my diligent process that I'm going to do consistently over time. And they get to these levels of incredible, incredible, you know, wealth and prosperity. Now, my goal with all this is to get to that level while also managing my life and not losing friendships and you know, and uh, important relationships, which unfortunately is what happens a lot of time when you are focused so solemnly on wealth and prosperity. I want wealth in life. I want wealth. What I mean by that is happy family, uh, you know, 
being able to spend time with my parents, being able to help others, but also having the capital to, to, to be free about what, I'm, what decisions I'm making, when, where, and why. If you feel like that, throw a one in chat. We gotta have to have a wealthy mindset, not just want to be rich. I don't wanna be rich. I wanna be wealthy in life and all the balances of my life. So looking at this and understanding that there's a timeline and a time horizon, and a roadmap to understanding where there's likely gonna be some intermittent market cycles between now and even uh, between now and uh, uh, March or April of next year, when the next halving is likely to happen, then we gotta understand, coming back over to my screen here, we can see right here, uh, I don't know why, what all this is. Okay. okay. Deadlines for US spot ETF approvals come into sight. This is something that we need to pay attention to because there's likely going to be buy the rumor, sell the news that goes in through all these cycles. The applicants, the applications by industry, giant BlackRock and others spark speculation of approval will be granted, but okay. Uh, uh, okay, where's, there's some dates here I wanna look at. So we have BlackRock, Fidelity, Wisdom, excuse me, Wisdom Tree, Van Eck, Invesco. While the SEC published documents seeking public consultations, oh man, excuse me, seeking public consultations last week, the clock on the review process formally starts only when filings are published in the register. That happened. This happened a few days ago, about a week, a week or so. Initially, this sets a deadline of 45 days but that can be extended as long as 240 days. So what is this saying here? This is saying that we have a time horizon between a month and a half to, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know how many 240 days is, but uh, sometime in the, in, in the spring, okay? So this means on the 40, going into the 45 day mark, there's likely gonna be some price action of people speculating, wanting to catch it before it just pops. And there's a possibility that the Bitcoin price Going into 45 days from now, if we actually, uh, let's actually go to another chart. I'm going to come right here, uh, and I want to just map this out, okay? If we come here, let's go to daily. Let's go ahead, do a uh, time. Where is it at? No. Here we are. So where are we at right here? The It's actually, it was a few days ago. It was about, about here. It wasn't on the on Saturday, but 45 days would be. Option V. So this would be on or about uh, August 29th. So towards the end of August. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at coming in towards the end of August. A like, I mean, and who knows what happens before that? Well, maybe we get that little sell off uh, that we were talking about, that little liquidity grab. Maybe we just start pushing up into that deadline, and when the deadline, when, when they get you know, an extension comes in instead, likely a little bit of a sell-off. And then again, uh, you know, each time consecutively that there's a new deadline set, uh, and if it gets extended, we'll have these push-up and sell-off periods within that. The only reason I bring this up is because it's going to affect how you are interacting with yourself, with your mind when you're trading. Because if you're not aware of this, and you're excited about the ETFs, which we all should be, but that doesn't mean we should throw caution out the window and just trade because I wanna be in before BlackRock. Do that, fine, but don't get trapped by the noise and the volatility along the way because you're going to buy now because you're excited, we'll get a dip, and you're gonna be scared that the price is going lower, so you sell out only for the price to then, you know, moonshot right after you sell. You've gotta have a strategy in place and find, uh, you know, identifiable areas where probabilities and confluence stack together so that you can make smart investment decisions that are based on probabilities while you're still utilizing your risk management strategies. That was a mouthful, but that's essentially what you want to do if you want to be successful and making money over time in these markets. So let's kind of continue on here. We're going to get into a bunch of TA. I didn't ask this morning, but if anybody, everybody in the room right now, we got 287 people in the room, 150 likes. Man, you guys are slacking. Get those likes up. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. Get involved, man. We are out here hustling for you. Free content, baby. Uh, but throw in a couple coins that you'd like to see uh, some TA on. We're going to try and go through as many as possible, uh, breaking down uh, what's going on in the charts, what's setting up, because we want to know when moon, baby. Well, the moon, there's a long road to get there, but we can start making sure we're prepared for that trip.
So going at, uh, uh, going here, blah, 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 205 days. Another uh, ETF, okay, the, hit the Federal Registrar May 15th. Uh, this is ARK, uh, ARK and 21 shares, or, or ARK 21 shares, Bitcoin ETF. A uh, Valkyrie spot ETF is not yet listed. This was a couple days ago, so these are, I think these, uh, I think this was accepted. Um, the point being is there's going to be, there's going to be a couple different dates that we need to pay attention to and all this. And it's also important to realize they may or may not also because of uh, a bit of the lens on if they, if they're delaying on certain ones and then, oh, and then giving like BlackRock and not letting, I think there's going to be a, an interesting, no matter what happens here, it's going to be interesting to see how the SEC handles any approvals if they come, because there's also a potential when approvals start coming, that it may not be one and then the other and then the other, because that would it, it somewhat favorably put whoever the first mover is in a huge head start and a huge advantage. So there's a potential, maybe maybe there's a delay of our uh, 21 shares, but then on the deadline that comes where BlackRock, uh, their deadline's coming for their application, maybe that's delayed, maybe all of them that are currently listed all get approved en masse, meaning they all get approved at the same time. So it's kind of an equal distribution of, of opportunity for all of them. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be very interesting to watch this. Sorry about that. All right. So what was else was here? Uh, oh, the, the, the one of the other things I wanted to talk about, but I may skip it because we I want to get into doing this TA, baby. Throw a one in chat if you're ready for me to shut up and get into the charts and start doing some TA. Because I know I can be long-winded, baby, but we got to understand what the context is of all these different pressures, supports and pressures in the market that can fuel the flames and the fire of the bulls or fuel the flame and the fires of the bears and how we meet that with what's going on with the strategy in the charts. So, uh, of course, uh, where I think I deleted it. Yeah, I think I essentially what I was going to talk about here. Uh, that was from me when I was here we go. Uh, Tesla, T Tesla had basically stopped there. They, they offloaded some Bitcoin. They held about 25 percent. And he also said that he was going to turn on Bitcoin payments again once. Uh, once you know, it was verified that Bitcoin mining was 50, more than 50% renewable energies. Well, we've been this way for a while. Uh, on on uh, Google, just searching for it, this, this total says 52.4%. Mining relies on renewable energies. Now, if we come over to this article right here, we can see that... Uh, where is... I had another article. Uh, yeah, so, so this is what I was talking about, the whole Tesla deal. A uh, company disclosed an impressive 1.5 billion investment in Bitcoin. They sold about, uh, when they did this, it brought the announcement as well as the buy. Uh, the, the announcement is what really sent it up because they, they, I'm sure that a big part of that, if not all, was OTC over the counter, over the counter meaning it's not impacting the price on, on, uh, on exchange. Um, they buy, basically, buy in bulk, kind of like if you go to Costco or Sam's. But the announcement of it led to a 25% surge in Bitcoin's value um, that was back when that led the all-time high to 48,000, okay? Uh, now, there was, I forget where it is. Long story short, there's speculation now that, uh, I think it's right over here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Bitcoin's global power consumption. Okay, sustainable power mix, Bitcoin mining versus countries, percent of terawatt hours. So, global Bitcoin mining. Sustainable, look at this, look how, look at 59.5% is uh, based on this survey, uh, basically shows that this is, this is better than, <laughs> this is better than every country. <laughs> and people still talk about it being bad for the environment. Are you kidding me? You know what the best thing you could ever do if you want to have sustainable growth in the sustainable air sector, whether or not you believe in global warming or not, if you want growth in the, the, the green energy sector, the number one thing that you could do to make it grow is create mechanisms that uh, being green or utilizing green energy would drive profits. And with Bitcoin, if you have mining power that is uh, energy intensive, one of the easiest ways that you could, you know, basically expand expand your profit margins, make make more money using less money to make it, 
is to use renewable energy or use uh, burn-off energy on already produced energy. Do you know uh, roughly 30% of the world's power that is cre- that is uh, made every year, whether it's generated, whether it's through coal or uh, gas or uh, whatever, any mechanism, about 30% is wasted every year. And they've figured out ways to integrate Bitcoin mining on the uh, the excess uh, gas produced or excess energy produced uh, to then basically offset what's going on in the power grids so they can utilize that energy. It's extra energy that would have literally been, it's already been made. So they're, ma- they're using something that's already there. And then if there's a bad storm, like we saw a couple years ago in Texas and the power grid's all messed up, they already have strengthened their 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 power grid to utilize Bitcoin mining to offset that power. And then if there's a huge surge in power need for AC or for, you know, maybe a plants down or whatever, then you turn off the Bitcoin miners and now you have all this extra available energy. So there's so many different mechanisms here. And we're seeing things across the board look, I mean, it's the best setup in history, in the history for Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm just so excited. If you're excited, throw a... Throw something in chat. Throw a funny emoji. Now let's go ahead and dive in. It's time to do some TA. Let's talk about it. Let's get involved. Uh, general sort of view right here on Bitcoin. This is just a dashboard and, and glass node. Uh, just a dashboard. Just to take a peek at some of the things we should just be aware of. Health check this is our physical. We haven't done this lately. I used to do a lot of on chain, but we need to just take a peek at it. Circulating supply. Look at this arc going. This orange line. This arc is suggesting the opposite of what happens with fiat currency. So as this is going up, you know, it's arcing over because there's less and less new supply generated, AKA Bitcoin mining rewards. Okay. Just be aware of that. Uh, Now coming down, there was another chart I wanted to show you. Uh, Addresses with non-zero balances. This has just been steady up and to the right with some some hiccups along the way, uh, which is nice to see. Number of new addresses. This is, we're getting a look at this sharp increase here, a little bit of a bullish divergence here. Does this mean there's new address? Does this mean it's new people? Well, no, it just means new addresses. It could be corporations having multiple different wallets, could be people having multiple wallets, but we're seeing increase, you know, an increase in activity on this level. Um, we see, look at this, number of transactions. Look how, look how, look at this sharp bullish divergence uh, right here, especially when prices going down. We're seeing a lot of activity. What makes a network valuable? The number of users on network, how secure it is, and how much activity is on that network. So we're seeing number of transactions skyrocket here. Okay, we're 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 having we're having some great great data points on all this. The mean hash rate. Look at the strength of the network. Look at this straight up. This is this is a sell off right here. This is when the the uh, the my, Chinese mining ban. This. Also reduce the value of the network. I'm not talking about the supply, the, the, the tradable speculative value. This reduced the value of the network because all of a sudden the, the hash rate, the, the number of miners, the participation on that part of the network dropped dr- dramatically, which also led speculators, which are all of us that buy and sell on exchange, to also sell off in kind, which is why you see all that large price dip. Mining difficulty going up, meaning... I mean, when this is going very strongly up, it's just, it's stronger and stronger network. If the difficulty is going up, it's because there's a, a huge amount of competition for the number of miners that are mining. And so it goes up to sort of mitigate uh, and, and sort of not make it fair because you and I can't mine anymore, but it, it uh, makes the network more and more secure as more people are on the network. Uh, so this is all, I just wanted to check in on this some because we, I don't think we've looked at on-chain for a while. If we come over here to charts, and again, we're, di- we're diving in. Stay with me. We're about to dive into a bunch of TA. And uh, all right, no super chats. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, uh, favorites here. Now, supply, last active one to two years. Dip right here. I mean, question is going to be what happens in this zone. But man, this is, I mean, things are just looking so, so good, but they're looking so good. We're about to talk to this on TA that there is a very strong potential 
for a liquidity washout to the downside. We got a little bit of a sell-off with addresses over 10,000 right here. Uh, but uh, let's see. NVRV Z score. This is still going to be very good. We want to see this start going up, which would mean a separation in Bitcoin price positively from the realized value, uh, which would really indicate a lot of strength in the market. Uh, net unrealized profit and loss. Uh, we're still sitting in the zone. What happens after yellow? We get some chop and then we get up into the green, some chop, we get up into the green, uh, tap the blue. Okay, we're sitting down here. We're kind of at a little level of resistance right here in terms of the profit and loss, the unrealized profit and loss. This is, means people, unrealized means they're holding it and at their, as they're holding it, their price is relatively above or below where their entry is. So it's an unrealized profit or loss. Uh, now, the RHODL, I love this metric. We talked about it a lot. This is a one week to one to two year. And this is still showing that we have a huge, huge amount of space above us. Even if we topped out somewhere here or this cycle, which I do believe is going to happen, we actually get the price action, uh, the strength of price action actually performing with a stronger bull market than we had in 2020, 2021, uh, that it's going to eclipse the amount of uh, uh, percentage growth because of all this new capital that can flow into it. So what does that mean? Let's look at the markets. All right, Bitcoin. All right, let's uh, come back over to our chart. Bitcoin, let's, we're going to end with Bitcoin. So uh, basically, I leave you with the data on Bitcoin at the end of the show. Um, let's, start with, uh, let's start with XRP. Let's start with XRP because everybody's interested about what's going on there. Uh, where's XRP? I found you. There we go. So we've talked about this, looking at this on the 12 hour, we have this parallel channel. We came up, we tapped the zone. We've talked about this time and time again. If you hold XRP, throw XRP in chat, XRP army. I unfortunately sold quite a bit of mine uh, when I was moving just to make some liquid capital, but that's okay. I don't feel like I missed out. Okay, well, look at this. We got a little bit of a rejection. Is this scary? Is this the end of the world? Well, let's look at where this level was. This was, you know, kind of basically testing testing this region just above this. And in addition to that, we can see that this is also the 0.5 fib, basically the halfway mark. We're having a little bit of necessary sort of zone of resistance. Now, something to pay attention to here, we can see down here on the bottom of the chart, we have the BitLab volume right here, which also is giving us these order blocks. We can see this these red and green order blocks of liquidity interest. Uh, tend to be a magnet for price action to 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 move uh, between those levels but we see down here on the bitlab trend fuel we have this uh, basically divergence here on a uh, bearish divergence on the momentum now this is on the four hour what does it look like on the 12 hour okay just a massive massive mountain four hour what does it look like on the one hour okay see this is looking like this is looking like it wants to come down here money flow is still positive this is blue wave here uh, but we got, look at this, order block right above us, right above us. Let's see what it looks like on the two hour. Yeah, order blocks on all of them right above us. Now, we are chopping right on the zone, on this trend signal line. You see how it's red and then green, then red, then green. And we're not getting any real expanse or shading here. See the shade? The shade of the green here is a dynamic support band. We don't have any, there's no established dy dynamic resistance band yet because this is just chopping as it is. So as this is looking right now, we may, what I see likely happening is potentially even a little bit of a head and shoulders here and then testing down to the bottom side of this range and then potentially lift off. That's one, that's one scenario. The other scenario, and the reason why I'm leaning that direction is because if you look at this, this looks like a, uh, this looks like it is forming a little bit of a broadening wedge here. and. We've, I mean, we could come back up here, tap this again, then break down, but this is also a very small time frame. And one of the things that we have to pay attention to, I'm looking at the chart first and then bringing in the context. Okay. Looking at the chart first, looks like it could have a little bit of a bearish setup in the, in the very short term. However, with how much news is in, in how much news is, is surrounding XRP right now, how much uh, positive sentiment about everybody finally having this win with that XRP SEC case. This could completely ignore the fact that we have a, a, a rising broadening wedge here and not break out to the downside and just, you know, bounce here and just moonshot from here. So we need to pay attention to that. 
Uh, where it's at right now, I, I would say if this were to come down and test, you know, this uh, sort of point of control right in this zone, this would be a strong buy for me. I don't know what your strategy is, but this would be a strong buy for me. Uh, there is still potential that we get a little bit more of a sell-off. But again, I feel like the, the sentiment is so strong on XRP that it's kind of booing the markets. Okay, look at here on the 30-minute. What I was doing was I was coming down on the top part of my chart up here. You can see I was coming down the time frames to see when we would start getting this momentum wave to start to round. And we're seeing it on the 30-minute. And this BitLab intelligence is... I can't wait to share this with you all. So we do have a little bit of a dynamic resistance zone here. This bounce, look at this, right on this liquidity band right here, this order block from the BitLab volume, bounced right on it. Uh, we're getting the momentum starting to round. If we come down to the 15 minute, okay, this is just a little bit choppy here. So if we do lose this level, I, I'm looking first down here at 70, uh, holding 77 cents, which is the area we just bounced from. If we lose that, then likely coming down to the 75 cents. Uh, and, and, you know, we have this level here we can contend with. If we lose this zone right in here, I'd be a strong buyer. This 70, 74 to 76 cents, uh, that's what I'd be seeing on XRP. Because on the smaller time frames, it was, on the 30-minute, it did look like it was trying to round. But as we're coming down here to the 15-minute, this is still expanding to the downside. So let's see what happens here. This is setting up for a bounce if some... If some bullish buying volume comes in or another strong news story. Remember, these news stories are starting to just stack up for, for, for themselves. So we could pay attention to that. Yeah, if this does move to the upside, I'm if this bounces here, I'm watching this zone right here, the 80 cents, 80.6. If we're able to take that, then we can come up here and test this zone up here in the, the 83 sort of cent zone. We could take this level by level. Now, uh, what was uh, Ethereum? Let's look at Ethereum. We haven't been getting Ethereum much love lately. We got to give that love, baby. All right. So double click here. Look at all these order blocks on here from the BitLab volume. These order blocks, liquidity. This is pushing up. It's trying. We got this clear level. What do I mean by clear level? Boom. That's a clear level of support. Diagonal rising level of support right below uh, the Ethereum price where we're at right now. But we do have, look at this, these uh, momentum waves angling up sharply again. I want to see some money flow come up here though. This is looking choppy. We got the blue and yellow, blue and yellow. Uh, and it's not, it's not giving us a lot of indication here. We are seeing the volume come up here though. We see this right here. See this little, small little increase, getting some choppiness here. We're riding right on the point of control. If we lose this level, which is perfectly in line with this rising level of support, we lose this, then I think we are going to be testing that down into probably roughly around, probably roughly, I'm going to actually do this as a box. Uh, it gives it, because it's going to be more regional, uh, right? I think we're going to be testing down to this zone here if we lose, if we lose the current zone we're in, which is right here. If we lose this, uh, the, watch for the price action actually breaking down, trying to, Think you, make you think it's coming back in, testing this, and then continuing down, if that were to happen. If we hold this support, because look at this, we've, we've held this support a lot. If we hold this support, then our next level up is going to be right about here where this dotted line is, this uh, bearish trend signal line right here, which then extends out here, so you can see immediately what color th this uh, trend signal line is. But we, we did attempt to push above it, got immediately rejected. If we do find support here and come back up here, this will be... This will give us an indication if we're going to come up here and tap this liquidity in this zone here. So if we do get a bounce here, watch for it, watch for it not only breaking this level, but breaking this high. And if so, then we're looking at somewhere here. I'm not going to do targets above that right now because everything's feeling like it's a little, it's kind of feel like everything's playing follow the leader. So, you know, if Bitcoin really starts moving, we're probably going to get bullish movement in uh, these other assets. Now with XRP, that could kind of go whichever way it wants to go because of uh, all the sentiment behind it, the Fed now, the, the banks, the, all the stuff going on. We've got 298 people in the room. Everybody hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell. Join us in our community here. And uh, by the way, remember, we do a giveaway. We're doing a giveaway tomorrow. Uh, come over here to the BitLab Academy Twitter page, which is right here, at Academy BitLab. Hit this retweet button. Hit this like button. Follow us. We draw 
from basically we, we draw names randomly from the people that uh, do these uh, retweets on these daily deals. So make sure you're also following me here at Kelly Kellum. Uh, I just want to make sure you're not following any of the fakers out there. And of course, make sure you come check out bitlabacademy.com. You can enroll right here. We got the free option. We have the just to all access and premium discord. You can still use give me 30 for 30% off your first month, or you can sign up for the BitLab pro, which is all the indicators as well as a premium discord and all the courses that we have. By the way, we're doing a lot more stuff in discord these days where I'm doing these private member streams. Uh, I'm going to try and do one today, but I have something I have to do at four o'clock. So, but uh, I do them on the weekends as well. So get involved. Now let's dive back into the bit, uh, the uh, TA. So four hour, what does it look like on the daily, daily context? Okay, look at this. Bearish divergence right here. See this right here? Bearish divergence on momentum, upward side on price on the tops. So this is, yeah. But look at this candle right here. This is trying to reverse, baby. This is trying to reverse. So let's be patient with this. Daily is looking a little weak, but it might be just be at this zone. Uh, if we come down to the 15 minute, oh yeah, 15 minute, look at this negative momentum right here. Uh, and look at this selling volume right here. And we could tell it's selling volume because this candle is purple also. This only happens when you get strong selling volume. But then we get the stopping, the stopping uh, volume candle right here. Or basically it's, a couple of different metrics where you get the purple and then the yellow. You see, this is looking, this is looking weak. This is looking like it is going to try, uh, try and uh, break that level. We already looked at what those levels would be if it was uh, below here. So let's look at the next one, Cardano. Cardano, Cardano. If you, th if you hold Cardano, throw Cardano in the chat. Let's see how many people of you are Cardano holders. When this, this can be so boring sometimes, but then it gets very, very bullish. Uh, and moves on its own. So, okay, look in here. Let me make sure I have the right setup. Okay. So, what we got a couple of bearish divergences here. Yeah, look at that. We had RSI hidden bearish divergence. We got, we got some, we got, it's kind of just chopping right here, but we do have this kind of expanded. This is on the 15 minute. What am I doing? Start on the four hour. We already know what the broader context is. So, we got the breakout of this smaller time zone or time, time frame right here. Got a bit of a, we could do that right like that or like this. We got the breakout, but now we have a rising channel. You see what I'm talking about? Rising channel. These tend to break bearish. So it doesn't mean it's going to continue all the way down to the bottom, but these tend, when they do break out, they have a high instance of breaking bearish, which is okay because we never really got a retest down here. I wouldn't want it to come all the way back down to this level for a retest. However, if this does break uh, bearishly, I could look at this sort of zone right here. Uh, if this breaks down and bounces on this, comes up, chops around a bit, and then continues up, that would be that would be fine. Now we do have the momentum starting to roll over on the four hour, and that makes sense because looking on the one hour, look at this bearish divergence. You see, do you do you all see what I'm talking about? We got these these two right here, and we have look at look at the, look at this just straight up. Well, this is slightly slightly. Uh, about the same, it's about equal. So it's very slight divergence, but we can see how high the price went and this didn't even go higher at all. And we got the, uh, got the red diamond here on the momentum suggesting this convergence back down. Question is gonna be where's price going? And it's, it's not even really making an attempt here. So it's, test, it's testing the zone, it's trying to capture some liquidity. If this does break down, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at a target down here at about 31 cents. If we lose that level then down here in this zone right here. See, we have this order block right below us too. So if we come down here, this makes sense. It's kind of like a magnet. If we do come down in here and tap this. If we lose this, I think we are coming down to the, to the, to the mid thirties. Very well. And have some buyers come in and some strength and just hold this zone. We got, look at these wicks. The bears are trying, the bulls are eating it back. The bears are trying, the bulls are eating it back. We do bounce from here. The next target above us is this point of control line right here up at 32.5, uh, which is not that big of a, that's a 24 minute chart. What am I doing? Four hours. Okay. Yeah. There we go. If we bounce up here, yeah, I'm looking 32, 32.5 to, yeah, yeah. 32.5 to 33 is kind of this zone right in here is where 
I want to initially watch with the price test start coming up. Uh, and it's, it's, it looks like it's fighting, man. It looks like it's fighting. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I would say right here, 32.8, the top of this candle. If we take that, then it's also right into this resistance sort of order block that we have right uh, overhead. But if we do start pushing up and we take this level, I do think the price action will likely test it to basically this zone right up in here into the 33s. Uh, there's not a lot of movement within that of what we're talking about. Uh, if we do continue up, then we could be seeing up in here. But this is this is this feels like it's somewhat suppressed based on what's going on in the market. So not not a lot. Yo, Kelly, can you check out OP brother? Yes, I will. Uh, I got to do something for Jeanette real quick. I said I would yesterday. Again, remember, no coin that I talk about is something I'm saying I support or deny. We're breaking down charts. Uh, and, you know, so we break down all kinds of start charts, but I told her yesterday I would look at Pepe. Uh, it's not something I, I really follow at all, but let's uh, take a look at it because you know what? I will, I will say that although I'm not a big meme coin type of person, I will say we can also understand what's going on with the risk and the risk narrative in the markets. Uh, when you have meme coins really starting to see a lot of liquidity pour in. So, uh, we're not really seeing that right here. We saw a little bit of breakout on this. Oh, that's a one hour. We got a bit of a zone here. Got a bit of a zone here, kind of a parallel channel. And look at this, we have a parallel channel of these uh, order block resistance and support sort of zones. However, if we do come down here and lo basically lose this level of this low, if we come down here and break this, uh, I do think the price is likely going to come down and tap, tap a little bit in this zone. Now, luckily we've got, looking at previous price action, interest points, we lose this, we very well could come down and tap this. However, I do think if we come down and tap this, this is this previous low. If we lose this, I do, excuse me, think we're coming down here to the 12, 6, 4, 7 sort of zone. If we're able to support in this zone, because this is looking, I'm talking bearish first, but looking at this, this is looking like it's consolidating, okay? And we do see this momentum arc sort of trying to come up, but it is getting a little bit convex right here. Now, if we look at this, not really getting clear signal. It's looking uh, like it's trying to consolidate. If we lose this level, then we're coming down. If we're able to break above this uh, resistance level uh, order block that's right above us, right at 15, 7, 3, 4, then I think the next top up is up here at 16362. But these things can move on a moment's notice, uh, just depending on when different stories, when liquidity, because you know, these smaller cap coins that have meme sentiment behind them, people really jump on or off the bus really quick with these. Now, what else do we have on there? We did XRP earlier. Let's do XLM uh, because that's something that's been running really nice. We're gonna do a link here in a moment, then we'll do Bitcoin. Uh, how's everybody feeling today, man? I'm loving each and every one of you. I appreciate you all. We got 272 people in the uh, viewership. 220 likes. What's up? Uh, really sh big shout out to everybody in, in this community. I love you all. All right, XL. Uh, this is market cap. That's not what I want to look at. XLM, USDT. Yeah, this will work. Uh, no, I don't want to look at Bitfinex. XLM. I want to look at. It's like a Coinbase. All right, we're on the four hour. Got some zones. Boom. Option J. I don't think we've looked at this one recently. I'm just, these lines are not going to be super accurate. I'm looking for a lot of bounces, a lot of rejections. So we kind of regionally have this here. And look at where this came back down and tested. If we go right here, we do option F from the bottom to uh, this top. Look at that. We came down, bounced right on the, the golden pockets uh, sort of support zone. But if we draw this over and we bring this up to this new high, we can see that, uh, man, I'd be looking in terms of strength. If it were strong, I'd be looking for this to bounce right here at this 382 because this is also these sort of levels. Um, now, let me go to the daily. Daily, bearish divergence on momentum. That's not too good. Now, if we kind of double click on this, we could turn on our RSI and uh, Stokes. RSI is looking like it's starting to roll over right here. The Stokes are kind of starting to roll over. If, it, if I were to guess, this is looking like it's probably going to test the bottom side of the, like come back down into this range here, down to the 
13 2. That's if I were to guess. Coming down to the uh, four hour, yeah, this is looking like it's rolling over as well. Look at this. We got this, this trend shift signal. Uh, so we need to pay attention to that. Um, we are finding support currently on this uh, dynamic support band, though, but this is looking like it's a con in a sort of consolidation range. So maybe this trades sideways for a little bit, coming back down to that level. Now, if it does break out, then, uh, you know, let's go ahead, do 12-hour. Yeah. This does break out. I feel like a, a pretty good level to watch. If we break this level, the next level I'll be watching is stopping point at 20 uh, and then uh, up ultimately up to 24.9. So that's what I'd be seeing. Now, Link. We got to look at Link because Link was making some moves and then we're doing Bitcoin. Link. All right. I had a story on Link. I know they just did some integration with the CCIP. Uh, uh, not CCP, the CCIP. They're also talking about trying to onboard a lot of money. Uh, the, C, uh, the CEO of Link, let's actually, you know what? Let's go to the source, baby. Plan for new international, international rail. Uh, no, that's, that's not it. Link crypto, let's go to crypto. Uh, change, 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 changes. Chain link. Here we go. Bridging the gap. Chain link unveils cross-chain inter interoperability protocol. This is what I was talking about. The CCIP. Uh, there was also another thing where they were talking about onboarding, creating rails for onboarding a lot of institutional money. Uh, I can't find that story at the moment. Moment. But looking at the chart. Looking at the chart. Okay, let's go to the day. Let's go to the three day because we don't have anything mapped out on this. This is that range I was talking about right here. We do uh, option J, option J, option J. We have this sideways trading range that we're still within. This is how long? Uh, we go put our mouse right here, press uh, shift, come across. 434 days we've been in the sideways trading range. Remember what Bill Noble says, longer the space, the higher the space. Longer the base, higher the space, meaning if you're really creating a lot of support, you know, if you look at uh, Cardano, for instance, there's a long period of everybody thought it was just a stable coin because it was so, and then when it moved, it was, you know, thousand. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous when it moved. But that's only going to be true with, with uh, coins that are really building out strong fundamentals and infrastructure and building out their ecosystem and you seeing the community grow. So with this, Chainlink is one of those things. It has the most, it's an Oracle network that's providing data and information that's verified uh, and aggregated. So it's a trusted source of info, whether it's for financial markets, sports, sports betting, data, weather. I mean, there's not only blockchain companies, but regular, just everyday uh, institutions are using Chainlink as well. Uh, and so if we look at this, uh, this these were just somewhat uh, rough estimates. Or, so we can kind of see this. We're kind of pushing up against resistance right now we got a pretty strong move from the lows here. We uh, we are up 70%. So does it mean that you've missed the boat? Well, if we kind of zoom out here, uh, you know, what would it be till what would it be till next all time high? Well, that would be or the previous all time high. That'd be a 685% gain. So what does that mean right now? Let's get into the four hour. We got our sort of level here. Okay, look at this inverse head and shoulders. And if we take the the neckline right here to the base. And we take this out to that, look at this. This basically came right up, tried to attempt this target. And this came right up to this level of resistance. Uh, and then you got a clear signal from the BitLab intelligence here. You guys don't have this yet because this hasn't rolled out to everybody. Everybody with the BitLab trading stack will, will, will be getting this and the volume and the BitLab trend fuel, which integrates all the multiple things we were showing on multiple indicators before. Now we have it in a, a three look kind of here. So we're tapping this overhead order block resistance while also hitting this uh, tr uh, d diagonal trend line resistance. This makes sense. The question is going to be here, though. Is this going to create a massive momentum divergence right here? Because look at this. This is a little bit worrisome. Does this mean this needs to cool off a little bit? Okay. If it does, what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and take uh, from this low, option F, to the top here. I'm looking for, and this is perfect. Look at this. Uh, this golden pocket right here, 0 0.618, 0 0.65. It's basically also the tops of these regions right here. 
So if this does pull back, I'll be looking at an opportunity, 741. So about, uh, about 50 cents down uh, would be a very strong opportunity. Uh, if it does lose this, it's okay. Cause we have this basically green order block right here that we're seeing. Uh, this would, this would be a, a little bit more worrisome because you're really eating up a lot of the gains in that move. I'd be really looking at buying anything in there as a pretty good setup. Also, if we break this, if we break this zone, watching for a little bit of rejection somewhere in here, uh, before, uh, basically, you know, moonshot there is something I'd be looking at at chain link chain link is an, I think it's, it's one of those, I don't want to say must haves very strong, very strongly needed in a portfolio because of how broadly it's utilized across the blockchain ecosystem, as well as in real life. And it's, it's, it's currently doing it. It's not a promise. They're already delivering on these things that they talk about. So this is, this is what I'd be seeing with, uh, with chain link. Now we got to get back do our big dog. Let's do Bitcoin and then throw it over to BitBoy Crypto so that they can do the news and entertain us along the way. Uh, okay, looking here, 12 hour, double click on the chart. Okay, we got uh, hmm, momentum coming way down, consolidating in the zone. That makes sense. So now look at this. We have two these two order blocks as well as this broader order block from back here. We have these two order blocks uh, that are sitting right above and below us. And we, I mean, it's pretty clear. We can see right here, if we lose this level, where do we go? We, we mapped it out on that other chart time and time again, but we see right here, this golden pocket that we have right here is perfectly in line with these tops. So I can see the price action coming down and bouncing in this region and taking off. I can also see it coming all the way down here to the 27, 27 300 range, 27 300. Now, why does that matter? Why could it be both? Remember, when we do our entries, when we're trying to find good entries on something, we don't just put our entire order right here because we want to get, sorry, sorry. Uh, we don't want to put it just, you know, we're going to get it right below, God, mother. There we go. We don't want to just put all our orders right here because the price action can very likely come something like this, chop around, tap just above that, and you don't get any of your order filled. I did a whole stream about this in the BitLab members private member stream, you can set, you know, multiple orders where you have a little bit of an order block here. You have another limited order block here and you have another limit order block kind of on the lower side of this uh, right here. And that way, if it does hit all three, you're getting the average entry of those right about here. But it's not always going to happen like that. It may just come down and top this and at least you get some of your order filled and it goes up and may come down, you know, and lose this a little bit. That's fine. But ladder your entries. This is why uh, it's good to see where the multiple different levels of where price action is as well, how that lines up with where the fibs are so that you can make the smart decision. If this does bounce here, if this holds here, comes up, then ultimately we're, we're waiting on, let's not call it 31.8, let's call it 32,000, a break of 32,000 with volume, with momentum. That's what we're looking at. Now, again, everybody, make sure you, you follow me right here, Kelly Kellen. Make sure you head over to Academy BitLab right here at Academy BitLab. Hit that retweet, hit that like. And uh, check out BitLab Academy. We got all kind of different courses in here. We got free access stuff, basics, TA trading, and we are working on another grip. Remember, last time we did an update, it's not going to be as big. Last time we did an update, we overhauled the entire BitLab Academy, and we launched with 100 plus new lessons. Uh, we are working to continually update new content there. And of course, we have the wonderful BitLab Discord. If you're not involved with that, get involved. Uh, with that being said. Did I miss any super chats? No super chats today. All right. Well, we had a lot of interaction. 239 people still in the room. 234 likes. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Let's stay smart. The market is about to absolutely launch, but that does not mean that the price cannot take some small liquidity dips along the way. So protect yourself so you don't wreck yourself. That's all I got for you today. Everybody, remember, protect yourself. Don't wreck yourself. Use smart risk management. Set a strategy, set your goals, trade because you're intending to, not because you're being triggered emotionally to do so. Otherwise, you're only donating your money to other people to buy a new deck, to buy a new boat, to go on a trip. Trade smart. Be well. I'll see you later. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. Hit that like button, sucker.